for the love of Jesus. I know I say that all the time, but I mean it every time I say it. I'm so grateful for his love. Where would I be without it? Where would we be? Where would you be, Becky, without the love of the Lord? He totally changes us, doesn't he? He totally changes us and makes us a new creature. Old things have passed away. Y'all help me out. And behold, all things are made new. Yes. So I want you to greet your neighbor tonight, and I want you to tell, tell them to the right and to the left, I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus.
tonight with all I am. With all I to gather with the saints together. It's such, such an honor and a privilege to be in amongst you tonight, worshiping my King, my Savior, my Lord, my strength, my per portion, my strong tower, the mighty, <laughs> the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. <laughs> he who guides my feet. He who sets my feet upon a rock to stay. Hey. <laughs> You know, it's an honor to be up here with you tonight. It's an honor to worship with you. And I can sense that you love him as much as I do. <laughs> the Bible says he has been forgiven much, loveth much. And I tell you what, he forgave me a, above a whole lot of mess that I got myself into. But I want you to know, yes, <laughs> he lifted me out of a deep miry clay. He set my feet on a rock to stay. And I've never been the same. How about you? <laughs> I've never been the same. Y'all help me worship one more time. Just lift your hands. God, we worship you. Thank you for all that you've done for us. We don't just worship you because of all you've done, but we worship you because of who you are. We worship you because you are the king of all glory. We worship you because you are, the, you are our savior, that you loved us enough that you would send your only son Jesus to die on a cross, that we might know you and spend eternity with you. Oh God, we're thankful for your love and we thank you for your kindness to your children. We're so grateful tonight. We bless your name. We bless your name. Father, I see that you are drawing a line in the sand. I want to be standing by your side, oh, holding your hand. So let your kingdom come. Let it live in me. This is my is my plea let the worshippers Surrender. 
in prayer I know there's several needs of prayer Jim who's Renee Kukomeister's husband needs a touch in his body I know that uh, Diane Clark fell Sunday night and she needs a touch in her body I talked with her today she's very sore we need to remember Jane and Roy Ratliff they have lost their son yesterday and their funeral will be Friday, so let's pray for them, that God will strengthen them. Also, the sisters, Julie and Shelly, the extended family. I know there's other needs. If you have mention of those two, would you help, help me with any needs? If you raise your hand briefly, and if you have any needs of prayer, maybe you need a touch in your body. Pray for Sister Beverly. She's coming down with the cold. Well, actually, she's getting over the cold. She's fighting it tooth and toenail. Amen. Anyone else that needs prayer? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we love you and we praise you. We thank you, Lord, that we can turn to you. Lord, as was preached last Wednesday night, we have boldness to enter into the Holy of Holies. And Lord, you hear and you're touched with the feelings of our infirmities. And Lord, we pray that you, Roy and Jane right now, that you will strengthen them and encourage them and uplift them and the extended family, the sisters as well, Shelly and Julie, Lord. We just ask that your spirit undergird them and that you strengthen them and you encourage them and you touch them and minister to them. Lord, we ask for Diane Clark that you touch her in her body, make her completely whole in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask for Jim that you touch his body and that you make him completely whole, that you give rest to our pastors and that you completely make whole Sister Beverly. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your presence and your power that's here. We acknowledge it, Lord, and we thank you for it. Hallelujah. And that you hear and you answer prayer. We give you the glory and the honor and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Yes, he deserves the glory and the praise and the honor tonight. If our ushers will come, uh, Brother... Garland, Brother Rufus, would you help him with the offering? We give a, a time to worship the Lord in the spirit of giving.
And we thank him for his provision. And we thank him for your faithfulness so that the lights are on and everyone's yes. taken care of. All the needs are met. Praise God. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. As our ushers are coming, we give God the glory and the praise for a wonderful turnout this coming, this past Saturday. Yes. And uh, we had the highest number believed to be present and we were in the red. So we praise God for that. Amen. Yes. Thank you, all of you that made it possible, all of your faithfulness. Praise the Lord. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness to us. We ask, Lord, that you bless each home, each business, each individual, and that you supply every need according to your riches and glory through Christ Jesus. We give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes. 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 Upon the Lord we will wait, upon the Lord we will wait, upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait, upon the Lord we will wait, upon the Lord we will wait, upon the Lord our God. kept worshiping amen praise god uh sunday morning you don't want to miss it miss renee will be ministering to us in the word amen and uh, we uh, look forward to that amen praise god turn with your bibles into ephesians chapter 4 Verses 11 through 15. Some of you wanted to know if we were moving or something, but uh, we've got some boxes. You know, y'all wouldn't mind doing me a favor, would you? 
the outside. Would y'all just come to the inside? So we, I know, I know it disrupts you. I know it hurts you. Just come to the inside and fellowship with them that are in. That way I just got one rifle <laughs> instead of a shotgun going out. And y'all can see what we're doing. Praise the Lord. Thank you for doing that. Thank you. <laughs> There's always a catch with Miss Carrie, isn't there? <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, it looks like the middle row is full. Praise God. <laughs> Glad you're here tonight. Glad you have come in spite of the weather. Amen. Uh, but we thank God for the rain. In Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 15, we're going to be talking about the topic growing up in Christ. And I know that uh, Pastor has, uh, we've had an awesome series uh, uh, concerning the gifts and dis defining them and, and discovering them and using them for His glory. Amen? And we want to go on from there. This is based on one of the chapters that he had looked at, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 15. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some a prophet, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should be no longer children tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love, we might grow up in all things in Him who is the head, Christ Jesus. Amen? That we might grow up. You know, there was a girl at school, and she would, uh, one of her favorite, and this might date me, but anyway, one of her favorite sayings was, grow up before I throw up. <laughs> now, I'm sorry. Some of you can't have a weaker stomach, a weaker disposition. But, you know, uh, within the body of Christ, we are to grow up. We're not to be babies forever. We're not to uh, be... Uh, uh, on the milk, so to speak, and we're to grow up in Christ, and, and He has given the different gifts and the abilities to the body of Christ that we might grow thereby, that we might be able to come into the full stature of who God created us to be, amen? And in Hebrews chapter 6, verses 1 through 11, it says that we therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, uh, of doctrines of baptisms, of laying on of hands, and of resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permits. Well, I know God's going to permit us to grow past the foundation of what we have. We all have faith, amen. We all have a measure of faith. We all uh, believe uh, the doctrine of, of, of the need of baptism and water baptism and the need of the baptism of the Holy Ghost and, and the baptism into the body of Christ as we are saved. Amen. And we know the foundation, but we need to leave the foundation of dead works and move on and grow up into those. Yes, we need the foundation to rest upon. Amen. We need the foundation as, as a, 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 a strength and as a help to us, but we need to grow up from that foundation. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 14 says, but solid food is for the mature because, um, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish from good and evil. Notice that it says solid food is for the mature, those that have grown in the Lord. Uh, J.D. has a wonderful little boy, and, and he's getting to where he eats crackers and other things, but he, you just can't give him anything because he will choke on it. But as we mature in the Lord, we're supposed to be able to handle the mature word of the Lord, amen, the meat of the word. And, and you know, I don't mind feeding bottles to babies, but it gets a little tiresome to part the whiskers and feed them the bottle, amen. 
we need to grow up in the Lord. We need to grow on. We need to go on from where we're at, from the foundation. Uh, <clears> 1 <throat> Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature. We, we speak wisdom. And, you know, pastor here, he doesn't uh, play games. He doesn't ease it uh, uh, back because he gives us the word of God. Amen. And especially this study that we've been on has helped us to mature in the Lord and to grow in the Lord. And so, therefore, wisdom is for those who are mature. Um, <clears throat> First Corinthians chapter 3. Verses 1 through 3, and I, brethren, could not speak to you, Paul said to the Corinthians, as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were able to receive it, and even now you're, I mean, you're not able to receive it, and even now you're still not able, for you're still carnal. See, the carnal uh, keeps us from growing in the Lord. If you, if you look at the parable of the sower, we know that the seed was good no matter where it, where it fell. But when it fell among the thorns, people who had carnal desires and lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, it choked out the word of God and kept them from progressing into what they needed to be. Amen? And so it's not the uh, seed that has the problem it is the heart that has the problem and our heart has to be receptive and however we speak wisdom to those that are mature and Paul said you're yet carnal for for there's envy and strife verse 3 and divisions among you and you're not uh, you're you're not carnal and behaving like mere men I am uh, at that time they were saying I'm of Paul I've been baptized by Paul, I follow Paul, or I'm a Paulist. Well, Paul said, look, God gives the increase. Man might, might plant, man might water, but God's the one that brings the increase in us. And no matter who we follow, uh, our eyes have to be upon Jesus Christ. Amen. We can we praise God for wonderful ministries that we have today that we can tune into, that we can look at on the television or we can look at on the Internet, and we can be blessed by someone who is miles and miles away. And they have a wonderful ministry. But we're not followers of people. We're followers of God. Amen. And if they preach the truth of God and that foundation and, and grows up from there. Hallelujah. Uh, so we need to mature in the Lord. We need to grow in the Lord. We need to look to the Word of God to give us strength and to guidance. Second Peter chapter 1, let's look at verses 1 through 5. Simon Peter, a bondservant and an apostle of Jesus Christ. And y'all don't have to be so quiet tonight, okay? <laughs> I won't go where Pastor goes, but y'all are acting like a Baptist church. No. <laughs> Some Baptist churches. No, I'm sorry. I've been to some Baptist churches that put y'all to shame. No, I need to stop while I'm ahead. So, a bondservant and an apostle of Jesus Christ to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of God our Savior, Jesus Christ. He's writing his letter. He's writing to those who have tamed that precious faith, that foundation that all of us have, amen, in Christ. We, we obtained that. We've, we know that. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Notice that there's a knowledge that we can have, a knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord that we can grow in, that we, the grace that we can go in. I know in Sunday school we've been talking about how grace is not just to cover sin, but grace is to help you overcome sin. And not only is grace to help you overcome sin, but grace is to help you in your life and walk with the Lord. It'll help you in the gifts, amen? Because the Holy Spirit of grace is what helps us, amen, in our walk with the Lord. We grow in the Lord and we grow in the grace. And Peter was saying, may you have the grace in abundance. May you have the knowledge of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Verse 3, and as his divine power, his divine power that pastor preached about Sunday has given us all things that pertain to life and to godliness. You have everything you need for this natural life, and you have everything you need for your spiritual life through Jesus Christ, through the work that He did upon the cross. His divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who has called us uh, all things that 
called us by his glory and virtue by which we have been given to us exceeding great and precious promises. Amen. We need to move on from faith, the foundation of faith, because there's been given us exceeding precious promises that we can advance to, that we can grow into, that we can experience. That, that it's not just salvation. It's That's the beginning. Amen. Thank you for those four or five of you that are following me. <laughs> um, that through these, verse 4, that through these... You may be partakers of the divine nature. He's left us exceeding great and precious promises. And you know what? I'm not the same person that I used to be 20 years ago. I've went through some things. I've experienced some things. And I know that God is faithful. I've grown in faith. I've grown in encouragement. Amen. I've went through enough to know that He's enough. He still will be enough in the future no matter what I face. Amen. He is with me. He is greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. I have a hope. And, and I've went through some things that has encouraged me. And he said uh, that through these you might be partakers of the divine nature. You may experience that Jesus Christ is just as present, just as real. He was tempted in all points like, it, like we, yet without sin. We have a high priest who's touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Amen. And having escaped corruption that is through this world through lust. Meaning that the, the people follow the path of unrighteousness, follow corruption. They follow death. Amen. It leads to death. But we have chosen to follow the way that leads to life and life abundantly. Amen. Jesus said, I've come to give you life, but I've also come to give you abundant life. Hallelujah. Verse 5 says, but also for this very reason, the very reason that we might accept the divine nature, that we might grow in the Lord, he says, give all diligence and add to your faith virtue. We've got the foundation of faith. We know what we believe in. We know the doctrines of baptism. We know how that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. We know, we know the basics, but let's add some virtue, which means goodness. Let's add some goodness, some treating others. <laughs> how many know that saved folk need to still continue in salvation? <laughs> To get along with people. You know, there's some people that made me bite bullets in half. As a Christian. I mean, you know. They, don't look at me all pious. That happened to you too. Uh, you know, they make you lose the victory if you let the, the dwell on them. But we have to grow in grace. Just the same mercy and forgiveness that we've had, we have to give out. Amen. We've been blessed with a lot. We need to give out a lot. Hallelujah. But for this very reason, we need to give all diligence to add to our faith virtue, goodness, to treat one another with goodness, to treat one another uh, with kindness, and, and, and to love one another. Amen. I'm getting ahead of myself. Galatians 6.10 says, Therefore, as we have the opportunity... Now, how many of you have the opportunity? Let us do good to all, especially to those of the household of faith. Now, that doesn't mean give your car away to some thug on the corner of the street. But let's have some love and some concern and some... Uh, especially to those of the household of faith. You know, there's people who get saved and, and they got the foundation, but they haven't grown in virtue. They, get, they can't get along with people at church. Now, I know I'm preaching to the choir, and I'm not preaching to y'all, amen? Uh, but we have to add virtue, especially, let's do good to all if we have the opportunity, if we have the ability. And you know, uh, one of my relatives, and I won't go into detail, uh, but they call me, and the only time they call me is when they need some money. Now, I don't have a lot to give. Yeah, some of y'all have some of them, but... I don't have a lot to give anyway, so right now I have a good excuse. But I have to use wisdom, and I have to have my heart in the right place because I might be a ministry to them. i got to use wisdom. Just because there's a good ministry out there doesn't mean we need to send our offering off to every one of them. We need to be wise, amen? We need to support the home front, and then, yes, we need to support other ministries as the Lord leads us. Um, how did I get on money? 
especially those who are of the household of faith. We need to help one another. We need to love one another. We need to have the goodness for one another. Um, and add to your faith virtue. And to virtue, excuse my print, but that's all right. You can read it. And to virtue, knowledge. Grow in knowledge. Uh, no, number one, we need knowledge from the word that tells us a man who is healthy and is able to work and provide for his own family doesn't need to be supported by the church. A woman that is young enough, Paul had a reason, should get remarried <laughs> so she won't be a busybody. <laughs> that's what Paul said. That's, what the, that's not the gospel according to Nathan. There's a reason. We need to grow in knowledge. Amen? Some of y'all, y'all might have to pack my bags and help me afterwards. You therefore, 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 17 and part of 18. You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware lest you also fall from your steadfastness, be led away with the error of the wicked, but grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Don't, if, you, if, if you're not going a direction uh, that's upward, you're going a direction that's downward. You're not going to stay still. You're going to grow in the Lord. You're going to grow in virtue. You're going to grow in knowledge. Or you're going to grow downward. You're going to put down roots where you don't need any. Amen? Praise the Lord. I'm going to get a drink of water before I spit cotton on the front row. We used to have an old pastor that preached to us, and we called it the splash zone, kind of like at SeaWorld. The first two pews, he'd get going, and boy, you better have your handkerchief ready to knock off some of that. Add to your faith virtue or goodness and add to knowledge and if we're growing in the lord we're growing in the grace and in the knowledge of our lord jesus christ we're progressing onward and if we're not growing then we're progressing downward colossians chapter 1 verses 9 and 10 it says for this reason we also since the day we heard it do not cease to pray for you paul said to the colossians and, and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. That, I mean, there's a lot right there. But he, 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 this is what he prayed for the new believers that were at Colossa. He, he said that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will. In all wisdom and in spiritual understanding. That you may grow in the wisdom of God. That you may understand what the purposes of God have you. And, and, and pastor has been preaching on Wednesday night, teaching on Wednesday night. How that we can know the will of God and for us. And how we can develop those gifts. And use those gifts for the glory of God. Amen. And, and that there's not just the primary gift, but there's a secondary gift. And then there's, there's a gift wherever God wants to use us, you know, he may just spring up and surprise us. But let's do good. Amen? Let's use what God has given us. So that we may walk worthy of the Lord, verse 10. And this is the one I didn't give you, Brother Mike, I think. You may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. You know, to bear fruit, there's some things that will bear fruit in, in just a matter of weeks. But there's some things that take a while for a year or two years or three years to develop the fruit of it. And even the first year, some of those trees that have fruit trees, you can't eat any of the fruit because it's not good. It's not developed, even though it produced some fruit. But you be patient and let that fruit grow. And next year, it's going to be good. And 10 years down the road, it's going to be awesome. You can get you a peach cobbler. Amen. Praise God. I know some of y'all hadn't had supper, but anyway, I had to go there. But, but you can have fruit immediately or you can have fruit. And there's different areas of our life that God is working on. And we're growing in that fruit. We're growing in that knowledge. We're growing in the way that he wants us to go. And there's some people that in that area of their life, they just produce fruit overnight. Uh, there's other people, it takes a while to produce. But, but they produce fruit overnight in another area. 
And each of us are an individual. As we yield to the Lord, as we allow him to work on us, as the Holy Spirit does the will of God, amen, we allow the fruit to be produced. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 6 says, And add to knowledge... Is that right? Yes. I'll put these boxes up here, and I hope I put them in order. Self-control. Now, he's talking to Christians. There's areas of our life that we don't have self-control as we grow in the Lord. And some of us may be anger, you know. Uh, some of us, I mean, just it could go on and on. But the Holy Spirit... One of the fruits of the Spirit, Galatians 5, 22 and verse 23 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. You get full of the Spirit of God, you'll get some of these virtues that you need in your life. Amen? You get some of the, the self-control. You'll get some of the knowledge. You'll get some of the virtue, the goodness, because you're full of the Spirit of God. You're full of the nature of Christ. Amen? And, and we need the, the Holy Spirit to guide and direct us, to help us to grow in self-control. And you know what? The devil will try to tell you that you don't have power. Power to overcome. But you do have power to overcome. And it's in humbling ourselves and submitting ourselves to the will and purpose of God. It's, it's just surrendering to the Holy Spirit. The devil tries to make it, oh, I wish I could make this and I, I get so upset. Just surrender. Just walk away. Let the Lord work on your emotions. Let the Lord work on whatever area of your life. And there is self-control can come over. You surrender yourself to the will of God, the purpose of God. And He uh, performs self-control in your life. Uh, you, you've made the choice. Yes, you, the choice is still with you. Adam and Eve had the choice. We still have the choice. But we choose to surrender to God's will and God's purpose. Amen? Um. <clears throat> 2 Timothy 1 and 7, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of sound mind. And a sound mind means self-control. You have your mind where it is controlled, and uh, the Lord helps you to make those choices. You desire to... Paul talked about how the mind warred against the flesh, I mean the flesh against the spirit, and, and that the carnal mind was an enemy of God, but the renewed mind, amen, by the renewing of the mind, we are able to grow in the Lord. And, and it doesn't happen overnight. We're not a perfect Christian. But God begins to work in us. And as we begin to say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, we grow in the Lord. Yes, we might stumble. We might fall. But we need to get up from there and continue on. Amen. Let the mercy and grace of God uh, be for us. If a man sins, he has an advocate with the Father. And you which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. And you know what? I have seen it before where people have restored people in, a, in an attitude of pride. Uh, and, you know, they restored the person, but then it came over them or, or something else came over them and they needed restoration. Restore in a spirit of meekness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. So self-control, 1 Corinthians 9 and 25, <clears throat> it says, Everyone who competes in the games has strict training. Uh, at the beginning of January, some of you went into strict mode uh, with your body to, to train it and to uh, bring it under subjection. <clears throat> and some of you have done marathons and things like that. Uh, I have a friend... Uh, that I've known for 30 years, and uh, she married a police officer, and, and uh, she was way out of shape when I knew her. But I moved up here, and she started marathons. And today, her body is impeccable, and I, I'm not lusting after her, okay? She's a friend. <laughs> but, I mean, she has almost to the degree of too much, but she has just ran, started out somewhere with 10 miles, uh, I mean, 10 10 feet. Uh, and then she's gotten to where she can do a 10-mile marathon. Praise God. Uh, you know, we have to discipline ourselves spiritually. We have to discipline ourselves spiritually. And, and they do it to win a crown that will not last. But we do it to win a crown that will last forever. Amen? Praise the name of Jesus. 
So we have self-control. You know, Jesus was talking about the last days in Matthew 24. And he said, uh, but he who endures to the end, the same shall be saved. The, the Proverbs tells us the, the battle's not to the strong and the race is not to the swift. It's the one who endures to the end, amen, that we will be able to be saved. And so we trust in the Lord to keep after what he guides and directs us in. Uh, after we add self-control, let's add... Now, some scriptures say endurance some say perseverance it's the same amen uh we must endure we we have a uh people quit marriage people quit jobs people that have no sense of commitment amen you know our former generation my parents and my grandparents they were uh, uh stuck to committed i asked my grandmother one day not my grandma hooper but my grandma williams I said, how did you stay with him so long? Because she was fussing and carrying on about some of the stuff he did. I said, well, how can you stay with him so long? She said, you just make up your mind that you're going to love him and that you're going to forgive him and you're going to go on with him. Today, the first little rough road that we have, let's file for divorce. People uh, at the job, you know, the first, listen, everybody ain't going to like you at the job. Some people might like you, some people may tolerate you, and some people might antagonize you. But you know what? You can set your feet, face like a flint, and you can per perform what you need to do, and you can ignore those that don't like you, and, and you can tolerate those that tolerate you, and you can love those that love you. Amen? Paul said we can love easily someone that loves us, but we need to have endurance, commitment, perseverance and in the last days he said there'll be a falling away because people won't have that endurance but we need to have an endurance and the one that endures to the end not the one that's necessarily the strongest not the one that's necessarily the quickest because there's some that 20 30 years ago they were on fire for God they were loving God they were serving God but today they're living opposite of what God has called them to do and I, they're friends of mine I know them you know people that have turned their heart it's not the one that that can be the strongest it's the one that endures to the end but godliness with contentment is great gain We just need people to be godly. Godliness, to follow after the Lord. Yes, it's all right to have fun with your friends, but you know there's a point you know where you've crossed the line. You know when you've said too much, when you've done too much. We need to do things that are godly, that, that glorify God. We need to grow in godliness, amen, to grow in His character. His, and, and also, you know, when we look at people, we, we look at people through God's eyes. We don't look at them through our eyes. Paul says you're, you're uh, foolish to judge yourselves with yourselves. Ju just, just let God, who are you to judge another man's servant? <laughs> Amen. Uh, let God work on someone. And you know what? What they might have uh, a problem with, what if your, uh, it might be more visible, what if yours was just opened up and put up before people? <laughs> Amen. We pray for grace and forgiveness and mercy. Amen. We need to be willing to give just as much to the other person. Hallelujah. But godliness with contentment is great gain in our walk with the Lord. If we have contentment, if we're, uh, we're not after the next. You know, I had a list of what I wanted in 2003. I had a list. I wanted a bigger truck. I wanted a better house. I wanted this, that, and the other. And I had a list. Then I went to India on a mission trip. And I came back with that list wadded up. We live like kings and queens compared to most of the world. Amen. We have even our people who live in housing. And God bless you if you have to. But they live like kings and queens. They're not dependent upon uh, electricity stopping in the middle of the night. Uh, water not flowing for them. All the things that we take for granted. And, and so my list dwindled. <clears throat> 
And I became content with the things that I had from the Lord, amen? And I realized that I have Christ's greater riches, amen, than the riches that this world has to offer. Uh, Joseph, or was it Moses? Let me think. Yes, it was Moses. He chose rather to suffer with God's people than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Yes, sin can have a pleasure, but it's only for a season. But the things of God have no regret. You don't wake up in the next morning with a hangover. You don't need more. You just want more. Amen. <laughs> and God gives you everything you have need of. <clears throat> Second Peter chapter 1, verse 7. Add to godliness... Kindness. Some of you are putting your shoes up under the chair so I don't step on them. Amen. As you have the power, as we read earlier, to do good to all men, especially to those of the household of faith, have brotherly kindness. The same kindness that you want, you crave, you, you desire from God and from others. Uh, patience that you want from others, amen, and want from God, you need to have with other people. You need to see them through God's eyes and have kindness towards them because the goodness and the kindness of God leads men to repentance. And who do you think he uses to represent that? He uses us. And his goodness in us, his kindness in us uh, is demonstrated to other people and they see the work of God and they're drawn to the work of God, amen, in our lives. Uh, Colossians chapter 4, mm -hmm. okay. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 20. Thank you. Uh, be completely humble and be gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. You know what covers a multitude of sin? Love. Love the Lord thy God with all thy strength, with all thy, help me here, heart, with all thy mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. It, it's easy to love ourselves. Amen. Even as bad as we are before Christ, we love ourselves. Let's love one another. Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14 says, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly beloved, clothe yourself with compassion, with kindness, with humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you, and over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. All the other virtues. You know, what does it say, the chapter of love? It tells us that if we have the gift of angels and the gift of men, the, the tongue of angels and men, if we give our body to be burned, if we do all these things, and yet we don't have love, agape, love for our fellow man, love for the lost, if we don't have God's love within us, it profits us nothing. So love is the supreme character that we must demonstrate in our lives. We grow in the love of God. You know, I didn't have as much love for other people uh, years ago, but I've grown in the love of God. I care about people. Now, there's times that we, <laughs> we run low on that, but we need to just keep ourselves before God and keep his forgiveness in love. Amen. And grow in love. Second Peter chapter one, verses eight through 10, it says, for if these things are yours and abound, if they belong to you and, and they abound in you, all of these virtues and uh, knowledge and endurance, self-control, godliness, kindness, love, you will be neither barren or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus came to destroy the works of the enemy. Jesus came to save you, but he also came to save your neighbor too. Amen. He loves you with an everlasting love. And he loves the man on Skid Row, the woman who has used up her body for, for, for money or whatever, drugs and all that. He loves them with an everlasting love. He loves those who are in prison. He says, in as much as you've done it to the least of these, you've done it unto me. And we must have his attitude, his heart. 
I'm not saying that you uh, get taken advantage of, but you use the wisdom of God, the knowledge of God, and you are un, you're not barren or unfruitful. You're growing in the Lord. And verse 9, for he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten uh, that he was cleansed from his own sins, his old sins. Uh, you know, it's easy to be in church all your life and, and forget where you've come from and look down upon people. I've seen people do that, you know, and I've even had the attitude adjustment I needed from the Lord, you know. Uh, but for the grace of God... So go I. Amen. God has been good to us. Verse 10. Therefore, brethren, even more diligent to make your call and election sure. Be even more diligent to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. Now, first, he said never barren or unfruitful. We will bear much fruit. Just as Jesus and his disciples came to that fig tree and Jesus expected fruit. Remember, he cursed it till it died because it was unfruitful and it, it never gave fruit to him but uh, we can be fruitful as it talks about in John chapter 15 the, the vine is dressed and it's pruned and God brings forth much fruit and through the experiences that we go through we learn how to grow in the Lord and we learn to trust him uh, but but he says it here at the verse 10 be even more diligent to make your call and lecture for if you do these things you'll never stumble it's possible to live in victory. It's possible to live an overcoming life. Amen. It's possible to grow in the Lord and to get from faith as the foundation. Amen. Yes, we need it as the foundation, but we need to grow thereby. Philippians chapter 2, verses 12, part of 12 and verse 13. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Make our calling and election sure. For it is God who works in you both to will and do of his good pleasure. I'm thankful that I don't have to do the, 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 the deciding of what I'm going to do in my life. I can leave that to the one who is the better driver. Amen. But I must yield myself to him and let him do his work in me. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it's God who works in you. And he's constantly, daily working in us to create us into the image of his dear son who came and sacrificed himself for us, who resurrected that we might have the victory. Amen? And we'll close with these two scriptures. Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 15. We talk about endurance. Not that I've already attained, Paul said. Now here's the man who planted churches all over the then known world, who, who went through all kinds of things, that are unspeakable that some of us could not have went through but he says not that i've already attained or am already perfected or matured he realized as long as this is his life he could grow in the lord and and grow in the knowledge of the lord but he says but i press on that i might lay hold of that which is uh for which christ jesus also laid hold on me Jesus Christ has laid hold upon you, and he's invested up in, in you. Amen. He has a plan uh, uh, of redemption and also a purpose before the world began for each and every one of us individually. So he begins to work in us, and we just yield to that claim that he has on us, and we press on to be what he wants us to be. Brethren, he says, I do not count myself uh, to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. There's some things that are behind that we need to forget about, that we need to put behind us. There may be some people we have to go to and say, whether you forgive me or not, I forgive you. Amen. Or, and, and also, maybe we need to release judgment upon them, not just forgive them, but say, I release judgment upon you because I've held you, I've forgiven you years ago, but I've held you like God, okay, you see this person, they're like a lightning rod, go ahead and take care of them. Release judgment upon them so that you can be free. I've done it in my own life. And it's released that person and it's released me. Amen. But one thing, I forget those things which are behind. I reach forward to those things which are ahead. Notice the word he uses. I, 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 I don't count myself to apprehend it, but I lay hold upon it. I press on. I forget what's behind me. But 
but this one thing I do, uh, I press forward. I reach forward to those things which are ahead. I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us, as many as are mature, have this mind in us. If anything you think otherwise, God will reveal this to you. As we are mature, we forget those things which are behind, and we press towards what God's called us to be. You know, one of the biggest hardest things for us to do is to forgive ourselves it really is christ has forgiven us the works last sunday it was preached the work's already been done we need to move on the devil holds us in condemnation but there's therefore now no condemnation who those who are called according to christ jesus amen who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit so we follow after the spirit we allow god to grow in those things and we'll close with this ephesians chapter 4 Verse 15, but speaking the truth in love, we may grow up in all things, everything, into him who is the head, Christ, that we not let one thing lack, that we grow up in all things, that we allow him, you know, if, if we are good to people, but we don't have self-control, what is our witness? Amen? If we grow in the knowledge of Christ, but we don't live a godly life, it profits us nothing. And if we don't do all of it with love, if we do it with a selfish attitude, uh, and we don't do it with the love of Christ, it profits us nothing. So grow up in all things, not lacking in any area. Let God work in us. Would the musicians come? Let's stand this evening. I know that there has been few in number, but wonderful presence of God. Amen. And you've come tonight, and you're not disappointed in what God has for you. Amen. Let's, as they begin in worship, and let's just bow our heads and let the Holy Spirit deal with us and work in us. You know, maybe we need to add some goodness to our lives. Maybe we need to add some knowledge of Christ. Maybe we need to grow whatever area. I don't know. Maybe the, I know the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. But there's an area that we need to grow in right now, right where we're at tonight. Don't worry about anything else. Just worry about what the Holy Spirit's dealing with you about. And I want to be what He wants me to be. I'm not what I used to be. I'm not what I'm going to be. But He's working on me right now. Amen. To make me into the image of His dear Son. And I wonder if you're here tonight and you say, Nathan, this has ministered to me. This Word has spoken to my heart of the Holy Spirit. is spoken to me and I need your prayer tonight I want you to raise your hand briefly and put it down the Lord wants me to work in those areas yes anyone else yes 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 anyone else yes hallelujah any Lord work in me create in me a clean heart renew a right spirit within me help me to be what you want me to be let's worship the Lord with them as they sing this song and then we'll come to prayer. Draw me close to you
someone else or maybe yourself but release that to God tonight release that to God tonight because he is for you he's not against you he knows the plans that he has for you declares the Lord to prosper you and bring you to an expected end I wonder if you need prayer tonight and you need to forgive someone or you need to forgive yourself I wonder if you raise your hand and put that down yes Yes, yes, yes. You know, they say if someone's standing between you and God, they're closer to God than you are. I don't want anyone standing between me and God. If you raised your hand tonight to the former request or the latter request, whether it be forgiveness or you want to grow in the Lord, there's a certain area, would you join me up here around the front? Because he's all I want. I want his will and his purpose to be done in my life. Just stretch across the front here. Let God work in you. Let God minister to you. Some others that lifted their hand. I don't want to call you out. I'm not going to, but step forward and let God minister in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you if you haven't raised your hand, and uh, would you come and stand behind these that are needing prayer tonight let that kindness that goodness that brotherly kindness come out of you that godliness step behind some of them and, and, and let's anoint them and put our hands upon them and pray agree with them in prayer Yeah. 
give him praise tonight. Hallelujah. Being here on this rainy night, we've been blessed. We've been ministered to in worship and in praise. I thank you for each one of you that have let the Lord work in your life. Amen. We want to grow on. Amen. We want to go on. We want to grow up in him in all things. Let nothing be lacking. Amen. I want you to come Sunday morning and prepare to receive from the Lord as Renee ministers the word of the Lord to us and come expecting and uh, be in prayer, especially lift up Jane and Roy as they experience this loss. But the, I've seen God's grace at work in their lives and uh, y'all keep them in prayer and uh, y'all come expecting Sunday morning to the house of the Lord. God bless you. Love. Hug some necks and shake some hands. Amen. <laughs>